The next seasonal banner for Fire Emblem Heroes' Holiday Onslaught is the God's Renewed Banner. This is the 2023 New Year's Banner and thus it's our first banner of the year. The banner doesn't drop till the actual start of 2023, or an hour before if in the US West Coast, but like most years, the devs drop the update early so they can take time off. New Year's is pretty big in Japan. As such, we get to go through everything early because I also want to enjoy the celebrations. The God's Renewed Banner follows the trend of past years by featuring characters of the recent main story book. That means we've got alts for Ash, Elm, and our dual Asker and Embla. Since 2023 is the year of the rabbit, we also got Pan as our stand-in bunny. We'll be going through everyone's stats and skills, plus talk about journal builds and playstyles. Before we get to that, the data mine has also revealed some of the orb packs and rewards we are getting. First up from the New Year's quest, we're getting 10 first summon tickets for the Omega New Year's banner. If you'll remember, this was a unique 8-man banner combining the newest seasonals with the past year. This includes the Year 3 Renewed Spirit banner and the Year 4 banner, which is just the Omega banner itself. It got rerun last year and seems to be rerunning again. However, on the event calendar, it said the Renewed Spirit banner has its own rerun and the Omega banner was not listed. Something isn't adding up. Either way, there are 10 free summon tickets on the board. We'll have to find out what is actually going on uh, by New Year's. Now, unusually, we also get 5 tickets for the newest New Year's banner. Those are not in the data mine, but they're most likely just tied into login bonuses. As for the orb packs, we got a basic 16 orb pack for $5. You can get dual Halloween Sothis and Violet for $25, and you get 53 orbs with that. That's not bad. For $37, you can get a 2 orbs and more tickets for the 2 banners we just mentioned. Last, for $55, you can straight up just buy the new New Year's Elm along with 225 orbs. Besides the last pack, you can buy the other ones 2 times. As with any data mined info, subject to change. Let's get to the banner now. The 4 star focus unit is Pam. You can get her at 4 star and 5 star rarity. Pam will be a Red Beast cavalry unit this time, and for stats, she has 40 HP, 41 attack, 44 speed, 32 defense, and 21 res. She has attack and speed super boons. Very fast unit. Obviously, Pan sacrifices some of her defense and res for pretty good offensive stats. She may be the 4 star focus unit, but Pan is definitely one of the better seasonal ones. For old skills, last year's 4 star focus had attack and speed catch 3. This year, Pan brings attack and speed clash 3. I believe this is the first clash 3 skill on a unit. I'm not holding my breath for a free to play unit to have clash 3 skills, but it's a start. First off, Clash 3 does not have the extra stat debuff neutralization effect if you or the foe move 2 spaces. It is a pure stat booster. However, if you can move 3 spaces, then you can still get plus 8 attack and speed. That is quite high for a tier 3 skill. If these do show up on the demos or heroic grow units in the future, then they're pretty good picks for cavalry units. That said, infantry and flyers can meet the 3 space max via warping and bonus movement skills. Now, to pair with this Clash 3 skill, Pan also has Low Spin Defense 3, another decent B skill. Being a beast unit, Pan gets a unique weapon. Keen Rabbit Fang exploits specials and is effective against cavalry units. If she initiates combat or is not adjacent to an ally, she gets plus 6 attack and speed, she gets offensive no follow up, and reduced damage from the foe's first hit by 40%. Plus, if Pan outspeeds the foe, she gains Bread Type Cone Reduction. 6 skill effects for a 4 star focus unit, pretty darn good, and Pan also has her beast transformation bonus, minus 4 attack and defense debuffs, and follow up denial when you initiate, it's a mini impact effect. All in all, extremely solid weapon, this is basically all the essential offensive perks you could ask for, except specials with not just flashing blade, but mixed phase darting breath is very good for cavalry units who can't run the normal skill, Pan has damage reduction, and can double any tank depending on follow up prevention skills, very good base to work with. If you plan to invest and merge New Year's Pan, you're in for a good time. Her base kit works just fine, but obviously upgrading to Clash 4 would be nice. Low speed and defense means more damage for Pan, and you can also use any attack and speed boosting Sacred Seals. Pan can proc Luna in 2 hits, and she'll have 4 quit on Gale Force with quit on per action. You could use Desperation since Pan won't be able to take too many hits, although a Near Trace Contest skill would be great too. Luckily on this banner, we have the new Beast Near Trace 3. Near Trace console with the ability to transform at any time. That's a solid perk for Pan, since Cavalry Beasts are pure initiators. If you just want defensive perks, you could also use Attack Smoke 4 to get Fall Denial for the enemy phase. Menace Skills are great, and Rouse Buffs work too. If you want to fight multiple times, Surge Sparrow gives percent max HP healing. You can also run the Guard Sacred Seal to not get hit by instant bonfire counterattacks. Lots of solid options for Pan. As a reminder, Keen Rabbit Fang does work on either phase. Pan could tank a hit with her damage reduction and maybe fire back with a special, but she doesn't have defense in the follow up and her defense and res are not the highest to start with. Still, New Year's Pan is quite good, she's pretty simple, but for a 4 star focus unit, she got a lot of good effects. We also are bringing in more beast only skills, so maybe look out for future ones to come. Beast Near Trace is great. 
but you can run regular near trace skills if that's what you got. Next up, for our book 6 representatives, we start with Ash, this time not free. Nearest Ash will be a blue beast infantry unit and has 41 HP, 41 attack, 19 speed, 44 defense, and 40 res. She has an attack super boon and basically Ash decided to drop more speed to crank up everything else. She actually isn't too different from her original form though. Ash is just tankier this time around. For old skills, she comes with Bonfire and Attack of Demons Bulwark, like her lord. Bulwark is actually very good with Ash's opening retainer C skill. She stands in the front, protects everyone behind her, and then afterwards Ash lets those allies warp ahead to attack. For her weapon, Heralding Horn, there are similarities to her base form's weapon, except special trigger. If foe initiates or has more than 75% HP, Ash gets plus 6 attack, she inflicts minus 6 attack on the foe, and she gains more effects based on the number of allies within 3 spaces. With one ally, if Ash faces a red foe or if the foe initiates, she gets brave attacks. With two allies, Ash gets 40% damage reduction. With three allies, she prevents a follow-up attack. So, Ash still functions based on nearby allies, but for the player phase, it works on healthy foes only. Instead of a follow-up attack, she now has brave hits, and brand new is the 40% DR. Ash then has the tempo effects when transformed. It looks complicated, but this is mostly Horn of Opening with some additions. For the Brave Hits, technically there are three checks going on here, but for the enemy phase, you just need one nearby ally. On the player phase, the foe needs to be healthy, you need one nearby ally, and Ash only hits, or Brave Hits, red foes. When her min-max low speed stat spread, it seems like we have another ninja unit in disguise. Keep in mind though, Ash basically has a 20 might Brave weapon, and 22 might when transformed. Lots of damage. For a new inheritable skill, Ash brings Distant Reversal. Unit can counterattack from any range, and when the foe initiates combat, you get plus 5 defense. The Distant Cousin of Close Reversal is here. This is basically a pure upgrade over regular Distant Counter, but you're going to need base DC to inherit it. Overall, Nearest Ash is relatively like her Mythic ult, just blue. You can bring Opening Retainer to any season now, and it combos very nicely with Bulwark. Remember, you can hide directly behind Ash, let her soak damage, and then warp to anywhere within two spaces of her. Very cool synergy. As for Ash herself, she needs three nearby allies to be at full strength. She's mostly enemy phase based, but you still get all her effects on the player phase. Mostly, it's just the brave attack part that only works on red foes. Otherwise, if Ash is just chilling out, all her conditions are really easy to meet, and her kit just adds more bulk and damage. If she's transformed, you're gonna get no guard. Taking a hit and firing back with Brave Fits lets Ash proc her 2 cooldown bonfire. You don't need Warding Breath, but it's nice if she is untransformed. You could also use Warding Breath to proc Ignis or Aether faster. If you want to change things out, you can go for more aggression using Ash's Brave Hits, add Distant Ferocity and a Secret Shield that boosts attack. You can also not run Distant Counter for better melee combat. Stance 3 will give you Guard, which combos with no special charge to fully block enemy special charging. You can also run Finish 4 for extra damage and healing. The defense from variant is on this banner. For B skills, I think Bulwark is fun with opening retainer, but you could be like the ninja units and try still defense 4 or low attack and defense. Special Spiral 4 also is an option to pierce DR. For seals, bond or farms are great, but you could do quicker post too for fun quadding. In the end, Nearest Ash looks pretty darn fun, super tanky with DR and brave hits. Also, you get tempo when transformed, and you got a rather strong unit. If you encounter red foes, Ash can also just brave hit them with her very high attack on the player phase. Great new unit. The third unit is going to be Nearest Elm. He may be getting the Fafnir treatment, and this could be her only playable version of Elm at least for a while. In fact, his weapon is basically just straight better than the one in the main story. However, Nearest Elm will be a flying green beast instead of red. He has 41 HP, 40 attack, 45 speed, 27 defense, and 31 res. Elm will have an attack super boon, which is nice, and 45 base speed is currently the highest for any flyer in the game. It's not the highest with dragon flyers, but it's up there for sure. Speed would be important for Elm, and he's going to be pretty aggressive as a unit. For old skills, Elm has Luna as his special, he then has Colorless Feud, probably because the regular Ash and Asker were colorless, Dua Asker is still colorless, and New Year's Ash is blue so he still has the advantage. For Elm's weapon, Fang of Finality, like Ash this is similar to his original weapon but we never got playable Elm. While Ash has a few more conditions to meet, Elm's weapon is just easier to use and stronger than before, it gets a special trigger. If Elm initiates or is solo, he gets plus 6 attack and speed and offensive no follow up. He also deals true damage per hit equal to X% percent of his speed during combat, X is equal to the number of foes within 3 spaces of the target, including the target, times 10, maxes out at 30% speed. Now if Elm is solo, he also gets damage reduction equal to the number of foes within 3 spaces of the target, including the target, times 20, and maxes out at 60% DR. As a flying beast, when transformed he gets that plus 1 movement. 
Okay, so regular Elm can also get 30% speed true damage and 60% DR. However, he did not include the target as part of the three enemy check and his true damage and DR were one hit only. New Year's Elm gets true damage every single attack and can block 60% DR every single hit, including AoE specials. Very big improvement, plus Elm XOE specials with partial no follow-up. Like his liege, Elm brings a new beast only skill, Beast and Trace, or Beast Near Trace, enables Cons remaining plus one and removes the condition to transform. All right, Beast Near Trace is literally just the beast only version of the Cons skill, and yes, it's still only for Flyers and Cavalry Beast units, if you want to use Elm or whoever in a non-heavy beast or dragon team, I think this is 100% worth taking over the stat debuffs on regular near trace skills. Plus one movement at all times for flyers is huge, and the extra impact effect for beast cavaliers just make them better initiators. Simple but effective quality of life skill. Nearest Elm will be our first playable version of Elm, and it's just better than the main story one. Any grouped up enemies will give him true damage equal to 30% of his speed and 60% DR for all hits. Since he includes the target, you only need two more foes within three spaces, which is a huge range. Elm is obviously an offensive unit, and he off offense on the follow up, which means, like Pan, he's primed to run Kanto. Elm has the new Beast near Trace to use it, and you just need an Ace Go of your choosing. As a reminder, the damage reduction part only works when solo, so Elm does need to be attacking alone. Solo skills are great, and more speed equals more true damage. Like Pan, you can heal damage back with Surge Sparrow. It will be tougher to run Gale Force or higher cooldown specials, but you could always go for something like Moonbow. For other defensive perks, Guard as a Sacred Seal works again, and you could run Wind Sweep, but there's no Kanto. Dive Bomb and Desperation work as well, but personally, I think Beastner Trace is just fine to keep. For C skills, if you don't care about feud skills, then a tier 4 smoke would be fun. Speed smoke for more DR, or attack smoke for follow up denial. Of course, a rain or hold skill work nicely as well. Overall, Elm is a relatively simple attacker looking to crash the New Year's parties. He technically gets weaker the less enemies are on the field, so Elm should try to get the fight in early. Last on the banner is Duo New Year's Asker and Embla. I feel like this was an easy guess whether it was a New Year's ult or not. How could they not pair these two together? Lord Asker is taking a page out of his Descendants book and is not a beast unit this time, he's actually a colorless infantry mage with 40 HP, 42 attack, 16 speed, 42 defense, and 37 res. He takes a hit to his stats for being a range unit this time, but he still retains a defense super boon and is dropping all speed to try and min max. Duo Asker will set a new record for highest defense mage in the game, he beats the gatekeeper by one point. He will even get tougher to take down. For old skills, Asker has Bonfire, no surprise. He also brings Attack and Res Tempo since he does lose the innate tempo effects when transforming as a beast unit. Finally, Asker also has his Mythic C skill Open Domain. As long as you have a single ally not from heroes within two spaces, Asker will give everyone in range Resonance Blades and Shields plus times Pulse. It's a great buffing C skill and since they are status effects, Embla can't stop them. For their weapon, Duo Asker bring the Duality Vessel, 14 might tumble exercise specials, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grant plus 5 tall stats, grant a free follow up attack, inflict guard on the foe, reduce damage from attacks by 20% of Asker's defense stat except for AoE specials, and finally, if Asker has higher defense than the foe, he will get flat DR against air effect specials equal to the difference times 1.5. So, like the other units on this banner, Asker retains most of his original weapon, he keeps his flat damage reduction scaling off a of defense effect, however, he trades the true damage part plus his beast tempo effects for guard and damage reduction from AoE specials. I'm not sure if this is the first instance of flat DR against AoE specials, but it's definitely not common. Asker will compare defense before combat, so buffs and debuffs do count there. If he were to have 42 defense and the foe had 30 defense, the difference is 12. 12 times 1.5 is 18, so against AoE specials, Asker reduces that end damage by 18. If the AoE spammer is a life and death user, which is pretty common, then they're dropping their defense more and you could start to get some crazy flat DR. If Asker had 25 more defense than the foe, then that is already 37 flat damage reduced. Yeesh. Moving past the AoE specials part, Duality Vessel is similar to OG Asker's weapon, you still want to stack defense in combat, and this time Asker has guard built in. The plus 5 speed is kind of funny, but they probably just copy pasted. Now for their dual skill, for all allies within 2 spaces, including Asker, everyone within, or everyone's going to get full plus 6 field buffs and minus 1 special cooldown. This dual skill can recharge every 3rd turn. The resonance statuses grant plus 4 to all stats in combat, so this stacks with the plus 6 field buffs. Asker then gives everyone minus one cooldown, no matter who it is, 
if it's at max cooldown or not. This is not Times Pulse, but together he can handle minus two cooldown to everyone nearby. This is similar to Duo Alphonse, who gives minus two cooldown to infantry allies, but it only comes from the dual skill. Asker splits it between his C skill and this dual skill, just in case you want the minus one cooldown at any point. Asker also buffs every unit type. Last, while we have a new inheritable A skill, Defensive Res Finish 4. Like the other Finish 4 skills, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, grant plus 7 Defensive Res. And if your special is ready or has triggered in that round of combat, you get 5 true damage on hit, and you heal 7 HP on hit. Finish 4 skills are very fun. The stat boost is incredibly easy to get, and the extra effects work best for units who can charge consistent specials. I was thinking about Defense Rens Finish 4 for my Brave Dimitri, but I'm not spending anything on this banner. I would also like to keep a copy of Dual Asker even if I did get him. Guess I'll just have to get two copies from the free tickets. Easy peasy. Overall, Dual Asker and Emplet are basically an updated version of Dual Alphonse and Sharena, super bulky infantry mage, and instead of Open the Future, Asker has Bonfire, and the healing will come from Finish 4. His Resident Shields grants Fall of Denial, but only for one fight. Still, he then gets his flat DR based on defense. For the most part, pretty basic unit. Bonfire will be on a 2 cooldown, Times Pulse brings it to 1 cooldown. When he takes a hit, Asker has no guard via the tempo skill, so Bonfire always gets charged, and this will trigger the finish 4 perks. He has a follow up attack to get the KO, and you rinse and repeat. With the dual skill, Asker can ready Bonfire for his player phase and fully buff up as well. This also applies to teammates. Also worth mentioning, Dual Asker has the Guard plus no Special Charge combo. That means the enemy cannot charge Special at all unless they bring their own no Guard effect. Now, you can swap things around for Asker. His AoE Special DR is based on flat stats, so Fortress Defense Rens is technically better. However, I don't think it's worth losing Finish 4. Instead of Tempo, you can go with Low Attack and Res if you want. For Sacred Seals, you could boost attack, but you could also just continue stacking defense and res with forms, bonds, shield session. Maybe you could use a deflect seal. If you want to have some fun, you can just copy Dual Alphonse's close counter plus special spiral build. We now have the upgrade city skills, and you can just get more defense for the close counter, and you can get special spiral forward to let bonfire pierce DR. It will also just recharge it for every engagement after, so Temple's No Guard is less vital there. As a heads up, it looks like our next seasonal refine goes to Winter Sothis. The seasonal after her is, you guessed it, Dua Alphonse. Maybe we'll see if Eddie Asker's siblings can take a bit from their Dragon God. Lord Asker seems to have already been inspired by them. That'll be it for this banner breakdown. Reminder, this does not come out till 2023. We just got the update early. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going over the Tempest Trials rewards, including New Year's Yarn. Our other bunny beast is here for the Year of the Rabbit. We also have some fun sacred seals, plus everyone wants all the orbs they can get. Thank you for watching, good luck if you're going to be summoning, and I'll see you guys in the next video.